Good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening to everyone as we continue here in the Laws of Kashus by Rabbi Yom Enforced, and we're still in the Hagdam, the introduction, as he's describing to us all of the details in the world of kosher food of, and animals right now, as we are discussing of why it's so important to know what it is that you are eating. Even those categories of animals and birds which are mutter, which are permissible for a person to eat. They're only allowed to be eaten if a person does the proper preparation of them. It has to be a kosher slaughtering. With all of the conditions and all the details in halacha, the nuances that are there to make sure that the animal was slaughtered, was killed ritually in the right way. If a, an animal dies without the proper shechita, the proper uh, slaughtering, nikres nevela, it's called a nevela, va'asur ba'achila, you're not allowed to eat it. So it would be if it, if it would die in the field, or if it would be slaughtered by a person who's not so uh, skilled in the area of shechita, you'll have the same exact problem, which is why we find that there are different kashas organizations, there are different uh, shlocht houses, as we would call them, they are the slaughterhouses, and they're on different levels, different levels of kashras, different levels where the, the sheikhtin themselves are much more skilled in what they are doing, and therefore they, have, they come with greater credence, and they come with greater reliability. Kemokain, so too. Behema balazmum, be'everea panimim, if you have an animal that has some kind of a blemish in its inner evarim, uh, its inner limbs, that this particular blemish that it has, for example, in the lung area and the like, if it goes undetected, it will bring about the misa, it brings about the death of that animal in a short amount of time. So therefore, if that is found, nikres treifa, it's called a treifa, va'asur gamkem ba'achila, you would not be allowed to eat this animal. And that's what they're doing when they shech the animal, they begin checking inside the lungs and the other parts of the innards of the animal to make sure that there's no moom, there's no blemish that is there. And if there is, the animal is unedible for the Jewish person. You have to know. Even though the majority of all of the Mumim of these blemishes are going to be found in the slaughterhouse. You won't find it in your own home. By the time the meat comes to your house, it's already cut up. You won't have see the lungs or the innards to know whether or not they were treif or not. Nevertheless, Sometimes you'll find a, a chicken that one of the bones is broken. And it's broken in such a way that it's a treif, that the, the, this bird, this chicken, cannot be eaten. And if you would find such a broken bone in the, animal, in the chicken when you bring it home, you have to go to the rough and you have to ask him, is it kosher or not kosher? There's sometimes that they will say it must have broken in the slaughterhouse. And therefore, sometimes we have to be concerned that maybe, in fact, it really is a trefa. It is not a kosher bird. You will not be able to eat it. Nevertheless, just because you see that there's a heksha, that there's a, a stamp of kashrus on the bird, doesn't mean necessarily that everything is good. The, the rav that is in the slaughterhouse of the chickens is not checking every chicken and every single bone that is there. They're checking the general kashrus quality of the chicken. And therefore, if you get home, and you see a broken bone in your chicken, you need to go and ask your local Orthodox rabbi if you're allowed to eat it. Now many times they'll be able to tell you this must be something that happened after the fact. Couldn't be that it happened 
in the slaughterhouse, and therefore it'll be fine. But if you would find such a thing, again, it's rare that you do, but if you would, so he's saying over here, make sure that you ask a shayla, you have to ask a halacha question to ensure that this food is going to be kosher. Okay, we have a little bit more of the hakdam, of the introduction. We'll conclude with that, Be'ezus Hashem, tomorrow, and then we will get into the main body of the Sefer on Hilchas Kashras. Have a wonderful day.